Great. Well, welcome back to part two. And in today's session, I'm going to start with um, pouring this painting. If you're just joining us, this is the piece that we're doing. I'm gonna look at it also in a gray scale. And today, I think it's a real fun part where we start adding paint to the paint picture. I have received a couple of questions, so I thought I'd review that first. The first one was, why do I pour the paintings? Why not just all brushwork, wet into dry, or dry into wet, or however your process. And what I have found in the pouring process is that you get really subtle value changes which for a two-dimensional piece gives much more depth of feel. So I like those subtle changes, like a value one next to a value two versus a value one next to a value nine. The other thing that was requested is that I bring my hands a little closer or the camera comes a little closer, so we're gonna try that today. And then the third question I was asked, why am I going to do this first as a grayscale? And the primary reason for that is that we are so used to seeing color that we don't necessarily see the values. So as a value painter, that's really important to me. I'm going to um, use an example. I have a green glass that I use. And when you put it on something, it takes away the color. It takes away the color. If you can't see it there, how bad if we do it on me? It takes away, it shows it in the black and white or in the gray scale, and you can see how deep something is. Here's another way of looking at your gray scales. So we don't, as a rule, see that way, and in training our eye, we have to move that direction so that you can get those value changes. I was trying to decide this morning if I was gonna do this um, in a sepia, which is kind of a warm tone, or a Payne's Gray. And I opted for Payne's Gray strictly because I had more Payne's Gray paint on me. So, I'm going to go through the stages. Um, I usually have two things of water. Just gonna lightly brush my paper with water so that it's nice and wet. This particular subject matter that I have picked, I'm going to do in only five stages, or five values. Typically, I work about a minimum of 10 to about 15. So I've gotta jump pretty quickly from a one value, as you'll see here, to a two value. So I've had to add a lot of color. I do, when I'm adding color, I do it um, a bunch of different ways, never quite the same. Um, I might use these pipettes, or I might use an eye drop. I have mixed my paint in a little container just to make sure that it's really nicely stirred. And for right now, because I have a lot of paint on it, rather than just waste that, I'll just kind of blop it around. Move this. If it doesn't move a lot because you have masking fluid, then give it a little assistance. But this is, for me, this is where the fun really begins. Just moving the paint. My drawings are very detailed. The way I apply the paint is pretty spontaneous, especially when I'm doing it with color. One of the reasons for not using a lot of brushwork is that after such a long um, process of paint or of drawing it, I don't want to lose all my lines right away. I also know that this will dry much lighter than this appearance. 
And again, I'm just doing this in a gray scale, so I'm not worried about the color. If it gets stuck here, I use my fingers. I wanna, again, just kind of splatter the paint. Not. I use an old beach towel. I do recommend putting something down. Now because of the masking, some of it's not gonna get into these little spots, so I just help move it around. you want your paper nice and wet. That's part of the reason why I stretch my paper um, and staple it because I'm going to add a lot of water to it. The other thing is when this dries, if I feel it's not dark enough, I can go and add more paint before I go to the next layer. If, for instance, I feel like I put a blob on and it's too much color or I don't like it, you can just really move it right off the page. So don't be afraid of it. Um, but just have some fun with that. If you're not one to use your fingers, and I know not everyone is, um, just to give you another option. I mean, you can come in with a brush and move it around. So, <laughs> now it's not critical that I get all of the cover coverage on here, but I'm gonna go, just do my very best. Because um, this is a, gonna be a light for, uh, scale piece or a light um, valued piece. So this masking is really stopping all of it. So I'm just gonna do it that way. Some people will actually take the container and pour it. Um, I don't typically do that, probably because I live in a condominium. I'm trying to be a little neater. This is my home. Um, and I also don't waste as much paint. I'm able to control it a little more. Again, if I wanna get it to move, Just wet it, move it around. Sometimes I'll actually shake it a little bit. And I'm not trying to get it to be like a painting of a door where it has to all be exactly the same. Um, because I know it's going to dry much darker, I mean much lighter, I am going to add more paint. And I'm going to follow this right up with going into um, color. If you have questions, feel free to give me either a call or email, jas 4 sale at gmail, and I will um, get back to you. Okay, let me just, so I'm happy enough with that. I'm just going to move this a little bit more. Just try to get some of that excess paint. And because I know the palms go down this way in my direction, 
I'm going to let the paint have a little bit of a direction. If I wanted to, I could spritz it um, and create more. But again, this is just going to be my value study.